So I'm not actually going to ask you how many of you might not have been completely excited about the idea of spending 10 minutes with a CIO at this time of the day in particular. Um, don't worry, it wouldn't offend me if many of you, it wasn't the first thing on your list. Uh, to share something with you, I never wanted to be a CIO. What drew me to our industry was always the computer science and engineering challenges. And I think maybe like a lot of you, I'd always viewed CIOs as being kind of these corporate bullseyes, right, who had this uh, less than enviable job of managing enormous costs, who only ever seemed to be known in our organization because of service interruptions, and who were always kind of slinging personal technology upon me that was never what I would have chosen and was typically, you know, let's just say less than compelling. But what drew me to the CIO job at Google was talking to the company and understanding that there was this deep-seated commitment to the power of new technology to transform a business. And I think that that idea, the power of new technology to transform a business, is why you're here today as well. It's our shared belief in that. But I also think that we probably both realize that modern IT really needs to change to keep up with the realities of this new digital economy that we're all living in, just in order to maintain relevance and have its position uh, and do the things that our enterprises needed to do, need to do. So, What's the first thing that I think CIOs need to consider in the way in which things need to change uh, in IT? I think we all recognize that the new normal is that personal technology is moving faster and is more compelling than enterprise technology. The stuff, the technology we have in our homes blows away the stuff we see in our workplace all too often. You know, and what this means, and what I, I don't think IT departments are taking into consideration in general, is the idea that everyone who enters our workforce is already an expert in some way of working and some set of technologies that they already use to be productive. Yet the reality is most CIOs, most IT departments, uh, don't recognize that the IT experts are no longer in IT, and in fact, are no longer just in IT, and in fact, what they seek to do is infantilize, infantilize their users to tell them exactly what they can and can't do and how they can and can't do it, right? To put training wheels on them and not give them freedom, not allow them to work in the ways in which they're most productive. And I'm not sure if infantilize or tyrannize, which was the better way of describing this. And you know, whenever I go to CIO confabs and talk to my peers, I hear from them the same few words over and over again. They say, I feel like a salmon swimming upstream in the river of consumer technology. You know, and my message to them is, don't be a salmon. Salmon, most of them don't make it upstream, and the ones who do die soon after. So that's really not a good place to be at all. Don't be a salmon. Instead, ride the wave of consumer technology. And what I think that means is giving your users choice, allowing them to express their opinion about how it is that they can work best. And when you do this, you know, you turn people from users into advocates, right? And they're advocates with you, with the IT department, for how it is they should work best. And that's a completely different dialogue from the, 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 the parent-child dialogue that IT departments typically have. And it also means that they're now responsible for being advocates not, you know, in their work groups, not just uh, to you, the, the IT department. And I think that, you know, that brings up an important point that the change that needs to take place needs to not just be in IT, but surround IT as well. If we want to be treated as adults in our technology choices in the workplace, um, that means that we need to take on more of the responsibility of adults and mean that we are making a decision because we are experts in the technology that we want to use and how to best work. The responsibility that we need to take because we've made that decision and we are experts is that we have to be, we have to take responsibility for knowing how to work best ourselves, and we have to be that first line of support in helping ourselves when there are problems. I mean, after all, this is what we do with our personal technology all the time. But I think if you do that and work in partnership with IT on the use of, on your personal technology, you know, we light up the passions of the people in our workplace, give them the things that they want. It's a far better place to be. At, at this point, it's probably worth my pointing out that there's one way in which the enterprise and the personal still continue to be different, and that's security. And the reason for that is the decisions we can make on behalf of ourselves as individuals and the risks we want to take are just inherently different from the decisions that we are allowed can make on behalf of the organizations, the enterprises that we're a part of. And as a result of that difference and the different set of responsibilities that we have, our corporate responsibilities and our personal responsibilities, um, there's a great challenge for IT, and I mean great challenge in the best of all possible senses, where IT can best innovate and make a difference in this realm 
for its users is by finding ways of securing personal consumer technology in the enterprise, allowing the enterprise to move at the speed of consumer technology innovation, but do so safely and securely. So what else do the CIOs need to do? Well, when you think about the great waves of change that have taken place in the world over the last few years, there's personal technology and consumer technology trumping enterprise personal technology, but there's also clearly the rise of consumer internet services. And in fact, what's happened is that the biggest consumer internet services now operate at a scale that we've never seen before in the history of computing. And with that scale, come opportunities for economies of scale and a lower price of compute than we've ever seen ever before. To give you a concrete example, you know, at Google, it makes sense for us. We get competitive advantage in the cost of compute, not just by designing our own servers customized to our workload, designing the data centers to house those servers and achieve unique power utilization efficiencies, and then to place these enormous Leviathan data centers in the parts of the world where we can get access to the very cheapest electricity, places like next to fully depreciated hydroelectric dams. You know, never in the history of technology have organizations done this or been able to do this at this scale. And it's produced a cost of compute for these organizations lower than we've ever had before. And what CIOs need to do is understand this is what the cloud is. The cloud, people want to tell you the cloud is many things. It's a popular buzzword in the technology industry. But ask yourself, is this cloud offering I'm hearing giving me access to the economies of scale that come from the scale of consumer internet services? If they're not doing that, it's not the cloud. It might be something very nice and useful, but it's not the cloud. And this is what enterprises have to do, what CIOs have to do, is understand how to move their technology and their applications into these clouds. And the reasons to do that are obviously completely changing the curve of technology costs will change the role of IT. That's fundamental and obvious. But it goes beyond that. It's also a matter of focus. And the reason is, it's a kind of a sad state of affairs that all too often, IT is concerned with logistics and operations and not actually with differentiation. What we want is for IT to maintain its focus on doing the things that will differentiate our enterprises, to differentiate them in culture, to differentiate them competitively, or to differentiate them in the marketplace for talent. And every cycle you spend worrying about logistics and operations are cycles that you're not spending worrying about the most important things to your company, which is how IT can differentiate. We made the decision at Google to move our IT applications into Google's own hosting cloud. Um, did this three years ago, and it was probably the best single decision I ever made for exactly the reasons I've told you. So, wrapping it all up, in conclusion, you know, uh, my CIO job is a far more pleasant than most, far more pleasant one than most of the CIOs I've met before, because so much of my job is about giving people what they ask for, which is a very nice place to be. But the reality of it is that this is really a necessity. It's not just ego gratification. IT needs to transform itself to stay relevant in the digital economy, or it will simply be left behind, and the opportunities that it presents will be left behind as well. But in order for IT to make this transformation, the enterprises around IT need to change as well. And we need to understand and support them. We need to understand and support that we're being asked to be technology adults, not technology children, and we need to work hand in hand as users, now advocates, with IT to realize the possibility of this new future. It's not easy, uh, but together, IT and users can make this change and make IT meaningful as a transformation agent you know, in the new digital reality that we have in front of us. So I think if you do that, uh, you can see that when you, you can succeed, and you can see that CIOs can go from this old school model of being Dr. No to being in the new era, Mr. How Can I? All right, that's all I had to say. Thank you all very much.